How was um, casting? Because I've always, I mean, you know, the film is obviously an incredible film. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Willis. Yeah, yeah. He's so, he's great. He's so great in it. Right, um, yeah. Was that, was it like a, he read it just yes? Or was it like a. Well, what, that was it, an interesting, yeah, no, that, that was a, that ended up being a very interesting story. I mean, we weren't going out to Bruce Willis. I mean, that just seemed, I mean, especially at that time, I mean, he was one of the top five, if not even three biggest stars yeah. in, in the world. Yeah. It's a surprise when he, like when you first see the film, you're like, Bruce Willis isn't it? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. you, you get shocked almost. Absolutely. You know, and you know, I mean, he was definitely popular in America, but I mean, you go to Korea or and like, no, he's, he, he's the man. He's the man. Yeah. yeah. And so um, what happened was uh, I originally wrote the part for Matt Dillon because Matt Dillon was a, 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 was a fan of my script for Reservoir Dogs. And, and and part of the thing though, so okay, so TriStar is long, long since gone. We've made the deal with Merrimax. And part of the thing about Merrimax was, uh, what was the deal? Uh, 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 we needed, a, we have an ensemble cast, but we needed a Merrimax, a one, one, at least one approved, if not two approved Merrimax actors okay. in the cast. And then from that point on, okay, you can cast anybody you want. As long as they had one of their, you know, uh, somebody they considered a name that they could sell. And so Matt Dillon kind of fell into the name category that they would, they would accept. Okay. So, uh, so I wrote it for Matt and it kind of seemed like it was going to be easy peasy getting him. But uh, he read it and he, he wasn't so sure. He wasn't so sure. He wasn't so sure about it. He wow. liked it, but he wasn't quite so sure. He, he, he was disturbed by the fact that there wasn't actually, like he wanted to see Butch actually boxing. You know, he was really, uh, I, I, I want to see the fight. Um, and, and there's even a little bit, maybe he didn't 100% get it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, um, but, uh, and I think, oh, uh, oh, 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 and this happened a lot. Okay. And he didn't want to play that part. He wanted to play the Vincent character. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, that, was, that, that was almost all the way down the line. Anytime I offered somebody a part, they wanted to play somebody else. Sure. Um, and so, um, so he didn't say no, but he didn't say yes. So, so he, he still has to think about it. Okay. And- that was a little scary because I thought I had I thought he was in the back. Right. And with him in the bag, I had a I had a go movie. Okay. And now all of a sudden I didn't have such a go movie anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm like, holy shit. So in anyway, in the meantime, uh Harvey Cattell, who's in the movie, uh, and he was one of the guys, so I had him. Uh it was, you know, he was, he was shooting in town. And when he was shooting in town, he'd usually uh, uh, rent a house in Malibu. And so he would invite friends to come over for the weekend and, and, and hang out. Jesus. And uh, so like I came over and I'm hanging out at, 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 at Harvey's place. And then, well, it turns out that Bruce Willis was only living about three or four or five houses down the way. Okay. And so I come over to Harvey's and I'm there and, and some other people are there and there's Bruce Willis. I've never met him before. Mm-hmm. And it turns out he is a huge fan of Reservoir Dogs. Okay. Huge fan. And like, like he goes like, if I had read Reservoir Dogs, I would have been in Reservoir Dogs. I would have, I would have agreed to do it, you know. Um, and he goes, that's well, one of my favorite, me and my buddies watch it a bunch of times. We know the dialogue by heart. We, we do the dialogue with uh -huh. each other. Wow, that's it's awesome. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I think it was one of those situations where, uh, uh, he told Harvey that, you know, sometime earlier, you know, earlier, you know, a couple of days earlier. And he goes, well, you know, you should look at a, a, a Quinn's got a new script out there. It might be something you might like in it. And then he's going to be coming by on Sunday, you know, to hang out. So if you want to say hello to him, you know, that would be a good time. And that's exactly what Bruce did. So Bruce called up his agent. Hey, get me that damn uh, Tarantino script. I want to read it. So little did I know he had already read Pope Fiction by the time I show up at Harvey's house that Sunday. And so we're all having a good time and we're all talking. And then he goes, uh, hey, uh, Quentin, uh, take a walk with me. I'm, I'm gonna take you to my house. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, introduce you to Demi. All right, uh, let's take a walk to my place. So we're taking a nice walk along the beach. He goes, so look, I, uh, I read your script. What, Reservoir Dog? No, 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 the new one, Pulp Fiction. Wow, I mean, that blew my mind. Yeah. All right. And, uh, and he goes, um, 
yeah, so uh, um, uh, I want to play Vincent. Because <laughs> I want to play Vincent. I go, well, uh, I kind of have a John Travolta uh, set up. To play him. For, for Vincent. And, um, and so he goes, oh, well, John's great. John's terrific. John's good. John's good. Uh, so we keep talking a little bit more. And he goes, okay, well, here's the deal then. Um, Okay, John is a good Vincent, and I wouldn't want to fuck him up, all right? So, okay. Uh, his agent later tried to throw his, John Travolta under the bus, all right? <laughs> it's a good he, agent. He, he didn't, yeah, yeah, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I think even, I even remember what his agent said. <laughs> he goes, okay, Quentin, um, I just want to just put this out to you, that uh, when your movie comes out, the last movie, Bruce will have done, that will be released. And he named some big Bruce Willis movie sure. that like grossed $300 million or something. Uh, that will be the last movie that Bruce had done uh -huh. when your movie comes out. The last movie, the star of your movie, John Travolta will have done, will be Look Who's Talking 3. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, he's not a bad agent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, that's what they do, man. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so then all of a sudden Bruce goes, uh, uh, I guess, okay, well, how about this? Um, what if I play Jules? And I go, well, obviously. Because look, I know he's black. I know he's black. Face but, paint. Uh, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, the yeah. Sam Reams, the, yeah. the, the, the Sam Jackson character. Sam Jackson, I know. I'm saying face paint. You can yeah, just yeah, yeah. Yeah, he goes, look, I know the character's black, but, but uh, you know, but it's more like just, you know, but he could just be a hipster dude, you know? And, sure. And I, I could do that dialogue because like, that's the kind of, that's the way me and my friends talk with each other. Sure. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, so you could make him a white guy and I could just be this hipster dude with uh -huh. John. And, and I'm telling you, the, 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 you know, you know, uh, you know, that's the way Bruno talks. All Damn, right. Bruno talks like that. Hard sell for this part, man. Yeah. And okay. So, and that was the real hard decision. Well, so that's real pressure at that time. I mean, for you, right? Because you, yeah. you have one of the top three movie stars in the world being like, I will do this. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And it's like, You're okay, like, so I've, I've, I've already said no once before yeah. to push somebody else. And now he's offering me one more bite of the apple to get his full attention and his full commitment uh -huh. to this movie. And the movie needs it. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like winning the fucking lottery. Yeah. Getting, but it's not right. It's just not right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I told him that, well, you know, the part that would be fantastic for you is, is Butch. And, and uh, so this is finally, right in that moment you tell him that? Well, well I, you know, I let him know. Okay. I let him know. Okay. So then finally I go, okay, well, let me think. Okay, well, that would be a big, big change. Let me think about it. Let me think about it and let me call you tomorrow. Okay. So I think about it all night long and finally I, I realize, look, it, it, I, I just can't make, I can't do it. So I call him up and I tell him and I'm kind of telling him how it's not going to work. And he goes, hey, Quinn, it's all okay. Let me take you off the hook. I get it. I understand. You wrote the character for a black guy. You want a black guy. I get it. I get it. I go, okay, but you know, Bruce, yes, but I think you should be in this movie. You, you understand it. You get the script. You get my sense of humor. I think you should be in the movie. Now, you, you naturally were attracted to the Vincent character, and then you were naturally attracted to the Jules character. There is a third lead here that I think you would be perfect for. And one of the reasons I think he would be perfect for Butch is I see him as like a 50s leading man. I mean, he could be a star from a 50s movie. Yeah. And like the actors that I think of when I think of uh, uh, the character of Butch is more like actors from the 50s, like a Ralph Meeker or an Aldo Ray or a Brian Keith or somebody like that. I would ask you, you've, you've had your mind set on other people, on other characters. I would just ask you to Read the script one more time mm -hmm. with the idea of you playing Butch. And if you don't respond, fine. But I would just ask you to read it one more time with the other characters out of your head and with that character on your plate. And then if you, and if, if you don't respond, you don't respond. And he goes, okay, I'll do that. I can do that. I'll do that tonight. Call me tomorrow. And so he did that. And then I called him the next day and he said, 
Quentin, the shortest sentence in the Bible is Jesus wept. The shortest sentence in Hollywood is I'm in and I'm in. Wow. <laughs> Dude, that's an awesome story. Yeah, yeah, he was a great guy. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.